What's happening geeks? Welcome to a new episode of Cosplay Chris Creates. Now this will be the first episode in a series of videos that will eventually lead to the reveal of my one-to-one -one scale life-size Freddy Krueger display. Now if some of you guys watched a glove demonstration video I posted, I think it was last month, I did mention and I was wearing the sweater and the hat that will go on the final display that I've always wanted to do a life-size Freddy. I have attempted one in the past but the mannequin I got was way too built. So anyway, I'm taking my time with this one. Um, I do have the uh, bus. The bus has arrived from Canada. I'll be doing a video review on that. That'll be part of the series. I'll be doing a review on the David Miller Creations Part 1 sweater, the hat that I'm using. But this episode is focusing on the mannequin that I'm going to be using, the base of the body and the all-around structure of the display. Now, it took me a long time to settle on this guy because at the end of the day, it's all about the pose and what you can do in terms of manipulating it and customizing it to rejig the pose to make it more Freddy-esque and not so mannequin. So anyway, I've got the mannequin set up here. I'll show you what we're gonna be doing. Most of the work is gonna be on the legs because he is a tall motherfucker. So let's check him out. Okay. Here he is here. I'm just gonna turn this microphone around. Okay, that's better. All right, so I got this guy from Moving Mannequins at Rattle Me here in Sydney. Good bunch of people. They had um, quite a large selection, but like I said, at the end of the day, it's all about the pose. Now, this has got the pretty basic Freddy pose down, guys. It's He's kind of got that that hip out that Freddy's famous for, and it's also on the side that he's going to have the glove. Now, the legs. The torso is fine. Torso torso matches up with my torso which is perfect because Robert Englund is about my height so by using my height that's a good um, general general piece of reference to go off when creating this thing this arm here now I've got to cut this arm and make it so it's up because that's the hand that's going to be uh, gloved that's going to be the gloved hand so everything apart from the arm is fine the head will obviously go and I'll have to cut out a insert there for the bus to slide on in. I may bring this arm out just a smidge because it's rubbing up against the leg there because I have moved the leg out, as you can see there. I've moved the leg out, so it's kind of going to be a semi-action pose. Now onto the legs. I measured it up. The legs need to lose about four inches, so about 10 centimeters each leg to bring it down to about my height because like I said, he, the, the torso's fine, he's just got the longest legs. So what we're going to do, we're either going to be removing four inches altogether from here, or the calf, or we're going to be removing two inches here, two inches there, on either side. Now once that section has been removed, I'll then be cutting out just little custom pieces of copper and using them as braces brace it all around because it hasn't it doesn't have to look neat or flush guys because the legs are going to be covered in baggy old you know soiled work duds so it doesn't really matter so that's what we're going to basically be doing with the mannequin so with that let's get to work okay so here's the first leg that i'm going to be cutting now the tape that i'm using is exactly two inches so i decided to do two inches two inches instead of four inches or four inches because i need this to be anatomically correct. I don't want to look goofy looking or funny looking, so it just makes sense to take two inches off the top, two inches from the bottom. So this masking tape here is exactly two inches, so it worked out perfectly. So I'll be making the cuts there, there, and there, there. And that's my lorikeet that's talking, hello. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna be using a regular saw for this, nothing fancy. The only thing you've got to remember is to keep everything neat, level and straight so everything matches up at the end. So, all right, let's give this a crack. Okay, so the legs have now been cut and the sections are removed. Fiberglass is one of the most annoying things to cut with a normal handsaw. It, uh, the blades, or the teeth, sorry, of the blade get caught a lot on the, uh, on the resin, so it's quite an arm workout. So everyone, sorry, everything is uh, worked out pretty well. Uh, the bottom of the legs are flush. They fit perfectly together. The thighs, on the other hand, um, 
don't really match up, but that's not a problem. Look, these are gonna be covered by, you know, old baggy, dirty work pants. So next step is bracing them back together. And what I'm gonna be using for that is some spare brass and copper pieces that I would lying around from when I uh, make my Freddy gloves. So just give me an example. Just gonna go like that, screw there and a screw there, easy. And the screws we shall be using are just some multi-use screws. And then we're gonna go over it with some high strength duct tape, just so there's no jagged edges or anything sticking out. So let's do it. Okay, so after about an hour and a half, everything is put back together and braced together. Um, it wasn't really hard, it was just more or less fiddly because you gotta keep swapping out drill bits. Um, especially because I drill a hole big enough in the brass or the copper just so the screw would slide through and obviously drill a smaller hole in the fiberglass so the screw will get a nice tight fit. Um, all in all, I'm extremely happy with the end result because the height of the mannequin is pretty much exact to mine. Uh, Robert Anglin, who played Freddy Krueger, is just a smidge taller than me, so it worked out pretty much perfectly. The only thing I'm nervous about now is cutting out the head and the chest to slot the Freddy bust in. So that'll be interesting. Tomorrow we're gonna to be doing the right arm cause he's gonna be holding the glove up instead of holding the glove down because hey, what's the point of uh, showing off a nice glove if it's facing down, right? So legs are finished. I'm gonna tape them up now just to get rid of these sharp edges here and just as you can see it's not very flush here so that's where the tape will come in and bring it all together so legs are done next step the right arm okay so arm has been repositioned you see we've got the braces there so i will go and duct tape all around here just to get rid of those sharp edges, especially when putting the sweater on. I don't want it getting caught on here and then unraveling. The legs have all been taped up. It's not pleasing to look at, but they're gonna be covered by dirty old soiled work pants. So the point is I'm extremely happy with how this is turning out so far. It's the perfect height. It's got the perfect pose. So next step is gonna be removing the head and a bit of the bus so the actual Freddy bus can slide in. So I will be taking my time with that. I'm actually gonna get my father to help me with that cause he'll know exactly what to do and he just seems to do everything right because he's a dad. So yeah, this is where we're at. I'm very happy with the progress. Next step, sliding the bust in. Alrighty, so the cut has been made and very happy with it. Nice and neat considering you're dealing with a little high-powered uh, Dremel tool. See all the way down in there. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so with this being cut, I've now measured up Freddy. It's very crude looking, but here is where the cut will be made on the inside. I've measured everything compared to the insert there. Theoretically, it should fit. Um, again, I'll be using a Dremel to cut Fred, so again, I'll be masking up and goggling up because even resin powder is not good for your respiratory system, guys. So, safety first. Now, like I said, this is the most nerve-wracking part because I hate to cut this, but it has to be done to accommodate into there. So, with that being said, let's do it. I'm happy to report that the cutting went extremely well. And here he is, very crudely mounted on the mannequin. Now, as you can see here, it's not sitting flush. That's because I've still got to go in and adjust some areas of the mannequin itself and then adjust some areas here so it fits in flush. I've fixed, if you can just see, a piece of copper under there and a piece of copper under there, just so he can rest on it for now. After that, um, I go in and adjust everything and make sure he's flush. I'll then tape it all in and That's pretty much it um, Very happy with the end result the proportions seem all in check Especially the legs. I'm very happy with how the legs turned out now 
For this hand here, this will be probably replaced with a casting of my hand or my dad's hand. Um, there will be a wire armature um, put into the mold before making a casting so it's flexible and bendable for when the glove's on it. You can do different, you know, poses with the glove. But for now, this is where we're at. Mannequin is pretty much done. I may have to shave this shoulder down a bit because if you see here, it tapers out quite a long way. And I've tried the sweater on. I'm not gonna uh, show you guys that just yet, but it looks pretty good except the shoulder here. It looks a bit too, he looks a bit too buff here as opposed to this shoulder here. So that's probably gonna be shaved off. I won't really worry about showing you guys how that's done. Maybe in the next video I'll um, show that all shaved down. But for now, the mannequin is pretty much done guys. So I'm very happy with the end result. So yeah, next video will most likely be on the clothing that I'm gonna be using, like the sweater, the David Miller Creation sweater, the pants, the boots, and the glove, and the fedora. Um, so yeah, stay tuned guys. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, geeks, always remember, cosplayers do it best.